the bed. <laughs> hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we finally received something I purchased a couple of months ago. The company who manufactures it had a material shortage. It's been a long time waiting for this and I keep getting asked the same question, why don't I use a quick change tool post? Well now I can. The reason I don't use a quick change tool post, I never found one I actually liked. I have used many different varieties and different brands and breeds of tool post. I never found one I actually wanted to put on my machines that I was willing to invest any money into, considering I was pretty quick at changing tools out anyway to a standard tool, tool post. But I did get the chance when I went down to one of our tooling suppliers to actually have a go at one of these. And I really like the features it has. I like how solid it is. I was able to put it through its paces and decided then this will be the tool post I will put on one of my machines. So I'm gonna run this and test it. If I like it, I'll purchase another couple for the other machines. Now that it's here, we're gonna open up and show you what it is. So what we ended up buying was a Dorian Tools Quadra Indexing Quick Change Tool Post. This is a 50N model, so that means it's got a five inch body on it. This is a 24 position, 15 degree increment tool post. So every ball that you click around to equals 15 degrees. They're made in the USA, very good quality. We also bought four turning holders and a boring bar holder. We ordered four of these turning tool holders. These go on the tool post. These will fit up to 40 mil tools and we've also ordered a heap of new 32 mil tooling to go with these. The reason I've bought 32 mil tooling is my little lathe suits 25, the larger machines suit 32. And I don't wanna be swapping my 25 mil tools from my small machine to my bigger machine. We need to try and fit this to our machine now. So there are a few different styles of tool posts, different ways of attaching them to a machine. You do have the European style, which is a bolt all the way through and then you have the American style, which is a T-nut on the top of your cross slide. My machines don't have the T-nut, so that's pretty much just gonna go on the shelf. We do need to make modifications to the compound on my machine to fit this tool post. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take all that apart, see how we're gonna do it, and um, go from there.
Right guys, so I got the tool post off the machine, end up taking the whole configuration off because it was very difficult to get in under there to remove certain things like the little brass nut for your Acme thread. That had to be removed in order to get this compound slide off the rest of the um, machine. We did end up getting out the main pin that holds the original tool post on. It's actually an interference fit inside this bore here and there was just a little grub screw to retain that from falling out. There was no way it could ever come out through the top being that there's that little shoulder there. But we've got it out now. So just sort of do a bit of thinking about how I'm gonna do the rest of this, whether I sacrifice this piece of material and make this the nut that goes onto the original bolt for the tool post or I make a new one. Do some thinking, have a coffee and we'll have a crack at it. After careful consideration, if I don't like this and I go and modify that to suit the new one, I can't put the machine back to the way it was straight away. So I'm not going to modify this. I'm going to manufacture a new nut, well, a new insert that can be pressed back into the compound of the machine that is also threaded to suit the new draw bolt that came with our Dorian tool post. So we'll get onto that.
Right guys, so we're about to cut the thread for our nut to suit our draw bolt to hold our tool post to our machine. Being that it was American, I assumed it would be a UNF. I was wrong, it's a UNS. It's 14 threads per inch, not standard UNF. I don't have a tap to suit that, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna cut that thread with a baby boring bar that I have modified because I don't have a boring bar small enough to thread holes that small. So, let's do it. Right, guys, so that went really, really well. I use liquid nitrogen because I can't really feel a great deal with 150 tonnes sitting on something. It's not really a nice press to press something delicate into anything. So that was a tooth out interference fit. Liquid nitrogen was by far the best method for this. I don't have a little arbor press, which would have been perfect for something like that, but liquid nitrogen, there's no forces anywhere. It's just cool it down, slip it in, and uh, she's locked solid. She's never coming out. So we're not gonna put the grub screw back in there. There is no reason to put that grub screw in there at the moment or at any stage, it's not going anywhere. Now we can get on to starting to put this thing back together. There's two ways we can actually attach the tool post base onto the compound. We can either drill it and dowel it, or we can drill and tap and put some bolts in. We do have the option of doing either or both. I am just gonna use the bolts. I don't really wanna use dowels. Prefer bolts, that way it's nice and easy to remove later on. 
because the positions of the dowel holes and the bolt holes are all the exact same spacing, I can use the hole where the dowel would generally go to mark out my bolt positions because it doesn't matter where they are on the tool post. The reason I'm not using the bolt holes to transfer the measurements down is the bolt holes actually have a 12 mil grub screw in them for a 10 mil bolt. So there's no way to accurately transfer them down because I don't have a 12 mil transfer punch. I do have transfer punches that fit the dowel holes perfectly. Don't have to go in there and do any unnecessary measuring. I'm just gonna go and mark them out and then we'll get it in the milling machine, drill and tap some holes and we're gonna attach this part of the tool post to the compound. There. So, 
that's where it shall live. just yet. I'm going to put it all back together.
Righto guys, so we finished setting the tool post up on our front line lathe. This tool post had features that I would consider to be more beneficial for me in my situation than other tool posts on the market. The reason I went this particular style and configuration is not only does it have four slots for tools to be, you can actually index the head around 15 degree increments. So there's 24 of them and it can also be rotated back to the right as well as the left where with a standard tool post, it can only go to the left. This tool holder is a dovetail with a wedge lock. I prefer these over other styles because even if you do forget to do up the top bolt, the tool holder is not getting out of the machine. The other sort of styles that are out there are your multi-fix style. I'm not a big fan of them. I saw one of those fail and a guy did get pretty badly hurt. The bridle that comes around the tool post to retain the tool holder onto it, it failed, it spat the tool, it wrecked the job, hurt the machine and hurt the guy operating the machine and he wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary, he's just doing pretty standard work. After seeing that, I decided I would never own one of those. I wouldn't trust that on one of my machines, being that I do a lot of interrupted cuts, really heavy turning. They've got fatigue points, I'm a bit concerned about those, in my opinion. They're a light duty tool post, that's why I went with the dovetail style. All tool posts have a height adjustment so you can lower the tool down to your centre height. Lock it into where your centre height is after you work out where that's going to be from your tailstock or your chuck, whatever you measure from. You then lock those two up and that's it, your centre height is set. They never ever change, no matter how many times you drop them on and off, they're always the same. Another feature that not many people are probably aware of is your digital readouts actually have the ability to remember tool offsets. What you can do is you can have all your tools set up in your holders, providing you don't pull them out of the holder itself, you can set your tool offset in your digital readout and it will automatically give you that tool's offsets as not all tool profiles are the same. I wouldn't have probably ever set up that feature on the digital readout with my standard tool post as I used to change tools out of that quite a lot. So in order to set your tool offsets, the way you do it, or the way I do it, is I use one of these little touch-off pads. So this actually illuminates when you touch it. And the way I do it, sit that on the chuck and bring the tool over to it. So we touch off on the center. So we're gonna to go to our SDM. We'll zero our Y axis for tool one. Now we've got tool one set in the Y. We haven't set the X yet. We'll back that out of there, get it out of the way. We'll change this tool holder. Chuck this one in. We'll bring it over and set it up. You can see the tool's not the same. So we go up to tool two and we'll zero that one out. Now I know if I put the other tool back in and run it back up to that point and go to tool one, it should be in the exact same spot. If you are setting tools up, you will clamp the tool in. That way everything's nice and tight, you'll get a true measurement. But we're sort of just demonstrating on how this works. The other machine has a digital readout on it, which also has the ability to remember tooling. If I like this tool post, I'll order a second one to put on that machine and then I can set all of these tools in that digital readout as well. Being that I don't just use four particular tools for any given job, I'm sometimes using six or more, I don't have to change out tooling from their holders, I can just simply swap from this machine to that machine. One of the other concerns I have with a quick change tool post is rigidity. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got all this set up now, so I'm gonna throw a bit of material up in the chuck. Uh, we're gonna take some cuts and just see, see how it performs. So the piece of material we're going to be using for testing today is a piece of 100 mil 4140. High tensile material, pretty standard, pretty on par with what we use here in the workshop on a daily basis. Standard. Right, so our first cut was a three mil depth of cut, six mil overall, took that no worries at all. We just did a four mil depth of cut, so eight mil overall, 
and it performed very, very well. It's pretty much on par with where the other one would land. So that cut then, that was a 6mm depth of cut, so 12mm overall, 335 RPM at a 0.25 feed rate. It has exceeded what I was game to do with my standard tool post. Very happy. Another good test is going to be when I start using my button inserts. The sheer size of them and the cutting area, the cutting surface is so much larger. If the tool post is going to give me any sort of grief, it'll be when I'm using a button insert. I haven't got my new 32mm holder for that yet. So you'll just have to keep your eye out for the next video where I'm using it. Just like to say a big thank you to Arthur from Live Tools. He was the one that was able to organize getting this from the States for us. They are very, very good quality. They're a lot better than a lot of the other shit you buy out there on eBay and whatnot. So if you're gonna do a tool post and you can afford it, spend the money, buy something that's gonna last. One of these will set you back a fair few thousand dollars. This tool post has all the features I wanted and more. So very, very happy with the tool post and I can't wait to put this thing through its paces. No. Oi. <laughs> Now we can point the camera in the right direction, now that that thing over there has been revealed. So it'll be a lot easier to try and do what we do without trying to hide shit. We've got to hide that one. So what we ended up buying was a Dorian Tools. What we bought was a Dorian... Dorian Tools? Yeah. Oh my god. What we ended up buying was a Dorian Tools Quadra Indexing Tool Post. Quick we... change. Just do, we'll do one thing at a time, because that's kind of what you can manage. Yeah? <laughs> Righto guys, so we've got the tool post set up on our most often used lathe. That sounded terrible. <laughs> Righto guys, so we've got the tool post set up. <laughs> Righto guys, so we've finished setting the tool post up on our front, front line lathe. Very, very happy with that. Yep. <laughs> okay, what else? Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, fuck me. Fucking hell. Fuck. Oh my lordy. He can't help. <laughs> I'm starting again. That handled that piece of piss. Instructions? <laughs> don't need them. So if I don't like it, I will call my tooling supplier, tell him what I think of his tool post and him, <laughs> and then I will put it on the shelf and never talk about it again. <laughs> and for some unknown reason, that's a 10 mil bolt and a 10 mil dowel. But this came from Banana Land. What's that? Six times 40. 240. It's 240 thousandths of an inch in one hit. What? <laughs> I don't understand. I need my bananas. This feels familiar. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Here we go. Fuck. <laughs> Fucking dog. Something's binding. So 
I'm not supposed to chew them. No. Oh my god. Fucking Hey mate, what's happening? They broke a ripper. Really? I'm gonna move back. Whoa, buddy. Jesus. No, I'm ready for this. No? On your bed. Go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> On your bed. No, 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 no. On your bed. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs>